Let's take a trip down memory lane for a moment. I invite you, if you will, to remember your first day of school. You walk into the classroom and find a wondrous array of features about the room. Windows are wide open, with blinds drawn open to allow for sunlight to engulf the room. You're among a new group of people, some of whom will soon become your friends. Your younger self is experiencing this amazing collection of emotions, joy, excitement, wonder, and even a hint of anxiety and suspense in anticipation of what's to come. It's an irreplaceable feeling. This is me on my very first day of school. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's a blank slate, ready for anything, but most importantly, astonishingly handsome for his age. <laughs> to many of us, this is the ideal glimpse of nostalgia into what is seemingly an alternate reality in which our capability of learning and exploration is limitless, almost as if we were free to learn what we want to learn. But then we grew up. The expectations changed. So did the things that we learned and our homework loads. We went from being as excited as Nemo on the first day of school to Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. I'd watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off a few weeks ago, and Matthew Broderick's titular character raises some good points. There are many scenes throughout the movie in which the students are just staring at the teacher with blank faces and minds, disregarding the lesson completely as he continues to lecture. And although Ferris pushes the limits of truancy with this comical genius in antics, stay in school, kids. You heard it here from a junior. <laughs> So before diving into the subject matter, let's consider a few things. Why is it that here in America, a uniquely patriotic country with an unmatched sense of nationalism, we pride ourselves on being number one in the world, but yet our education system seems to fall below those standards? Shouldn't this be a concern of ours? Indeed, it should. Because the state of our education system is an indication of the kinds of citizens that will become the future of our country. It's an interesting thought that we hear more about the complaints from students than we do about the eagerness to learn. Allow me to explain my idea of an ideal school system, my vision. In the school system, data is collected merely for the sake of seeing where a student needs help. Grades are not the determination of where a student is successful or not in life. Teachers help to facilitate and encourage the students to be the best they can be. Homework and testing load are reduced to a minimum in order to reduce stress. And perhaps the biggest change, in my opinion, is going to be that the environment in which we learn in is dynamic, never remaining the same, perhaps not even in the classroom at all. The Greek philosophers of yesteryear didn't teach their disciples in an enclosed building with desks, but rather in an open air environment surrounded by things to stimulate their thinking. Seems unconventional, doesn't it? But when considering how to reduce student burnout, maybe all we need is a fresh breath of air for once in a while. Research from the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, suggests that outdoor education increases student attention span, increases the mental, social, and emotional livelihood of students, and better engages students better than in the traditional classroom setting. Now to face the music. The Program for International Student Assessment conducts a test every three years on students age 15 through 16 in comparison to 79 other countries in the 2018 reports. And out of those countries, we place 25 overall. A far cry from countries like China at number one, South Korea at number seven, and Finland at number 10. So what is it that makes these other education systems score higher? It's actually no big secret. And no, it's not the superhuman intelligence that I so desire. <laughs> it's in the way that they teach, the way that they learn. Their approaches towards education are somewhat different than ours. Let's take a trip to South Korea. In a country of 51.65 million people, the education system here 
proves to be a battleground of the brains, extremely competitive. From early morning to late evening, these students spend countless hours engaged in their studies, sometimes as long as 16 hours a day, long after the school day has ended. This attitude doesn't change as they progress through the school system, as parents continue to strive to get their students into the best schools in the country. They'll even go as far as to enroll their students in these tutor-like centers called Hagwons, which produce additional content on top of the already significant amount of studies that students receive in their lives. Here in South Korea, the bell never rings on the student life. But high scores and high stakes testing that they instill within these students from an early age comes at a price. I just found out that South Korea has some of the highest rates of suicide in the industrialized world. PISA scores, while effective to a degree, might not be the best way to measure learning. Now for a stark contrast in scenery. Let's go to Scandinavia, Finland to be exact. Not only is Finland a country with a high standard of living, but they also have one of the most successful education systems in the world. Here, they have a different approach towards education. Here, there's no concept of a best school. You won't find private schools or charter schools here, just local schools. Many things make this approach towards education significantly different from others around the world, including but not limited to hour-long recess, 15 minutes in between classes to give students a sufficient break. But perhaps the biggest thing, teachers are paid on par with a typical doctor or lawyer, salary-wise. That's a huge difference that sets their education system apart from others around the world. And makes becoming a teacher there rightfully difficult. And after having taken a look at different education systems and what they're doing, what can we take away from these countries to better improve our own education system? If you were to ask me which system I were to lean towards, I would favor Finland's approach to education. Not only do they place importance on the individual student, but they also change their mentality towards education. Here in the United States, the common mindset towards education is, I don't want to do this anymore. Why do we have to do this? This is pointless. But in Finland, their students approach education with strategy, with this eagerness to learn. It is significantly different. And with the rise of technology, acquiring information has never been easier. With infinite information within the palm of our hands. We hardly remember a time where we couldn't just think of a question and search it up on the internet. And keep in mind that the internet is just under 30 years old. Anyone remember that horrible AOL noise? <laughs> <laughs> and let's not forget the crucial role of the teacher. A teacher serves a greater purpose than to oversee that a student can understand the standards. Teachers are mentors, they're visionaries, they're facilitators of our thinking and imagination, instilling within us this passion to approach education with a different mindset. Let's take, for example, Dead Poet Society starring Robin Williams. Here, he plays the fictional English teacher, John Keating, in which, unlike some of the professors at the school, he decides to take a different approach towards education. He decides to encourage ripping out pages in the textbook and going out there. And he encourages these school kids to just get out there and explore things in a different and unconventional manner, whispering to them, beckoning them to live their lives to the fullest. Carpe diem, that sees the day. And it's not just the fictional teachers either. I've had a great many teachers who have done a great deal of things for me in my own life. 
And that's not to say there are countless other teachers out there who are willing to do the same thing. Teachers will stay after school to host clubs for student enjoyment or tutoring sessions to help students better understand things. They go above and beyond to ensure that we can have a successful future. So to all of the teachers watching, thank you. And who would I be without acknowledging the greatest teachers in my life, my own parents, who have done a great deal of things for me and taught me a great deal of lessons outside of class. When all is said and done, I will always believe that in solving the challenges of education, we open up a gateway of new possibilities and new solutions. Everything from climate change to public policy to mental health and so much more. As the up-and-coming generation, we will be the ones to inspire the future youth to go on and do great things. We set the example for them. It is my hope that as the world becomes a more interconnected place, we will develop a better understanding of other people, bigger issues, and change the way that we approach education. I vision a day in which numbers are just numbers and grade books are more a tool than a weapon. I envision a day in which teachers are truly valued for what they're worth, valuable to shaping the leaders of tomorrow. And above all, a passion to pursue lifelong learning outside of the classroom. It is all a matter of staying curious. So stay curious. And as John Green once said, DFTBA, don't forget to be awesome. Thank you. <laughs>